For many older fans of professional wrestling, especially in the South, Mr. Wrestling No. 2 was a mainstay on their television. Whether you remember him from his rivalries with Magnum TA and Mass Superstar, or his matches with Junkyard Dog and even Ric Flair himself, there is no denying his popularity in the early years of mainstream wrestling. His ring work led him to 10 Georgia heavyweight title reigns and the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. But there is plenty more interesting feats and moments in his storied career. Stay right here for my interview with Mr. Wrestling Number 2. Welcome to On Deck. I'm Tyler Edmund. I'm sitting here with Mr. Wrestling Number 2. It's an honor. Uh, my pleasure. Ten-time Georgia heavyweight champion. Yes, sir. NWA. Hall of Famer all the way. Yes, sir. Now... I ain't got to prove. Prove by the ring, right? Now. That's right. Now, I want to welcome you back to Georgia. And I want to focus on Columbus, Georgia for the beginning of this. You wrestled back when it was when the Civic Center was a municipal auditorium back yeah, in the day. Right. You have a lot of good memories. Uh, Fred Ward was the promoter. Right. And Jim Carlisle. Can, right. can you give me some a memory or two from Columbus? Well, uh, you know, Fred, Fred Ward and I were very close at uh, 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 one time, and I haven't seen him for a long, long time. But nevertheless, he was a very good man. And I enjoyed being with him and being around him. And uh, he always had to ex express good intentions. And he was very hospitable, you know. And I, I don't know. It, it takes a lot for a person to be that way. So, and you have a lot of people that you think are nice, but they're not too nice. But nevertheless. He was a man that uh, was a, a good man. Fred Ward was, uh, I, I don't know, he just, he just was a, a very outstanding person. Uh, I, I think. Yeah. Well, right up the road from Columbus is Plains, Georgia, the hometown of Jimmy Carter. Oh, yeah. Now, I've heard a legend since I was a kid about you turning down an invitation to the inauguration. How, how true is that? Well, I, I, uh, Lillian Carter. She, she wanted to get a, a picture with me, and I said, well, would me go up there and sit down with you and we would have a sit. And of course, the FBI police wouldn't allow it. They said, well, you, you have to take the mask off. I said, no, I can't, take, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, keeping your identity was one of the biggest parts about your career as Mr. Wrestling number two. That is correct. And I also heard a story that you told about the, uh, you wore your mask 10 miles down the road after you left every show. Oh, yes, indeed. Did anybody ever catch you? No, sir. <laughs> That's what I'm I've talking about. I've had a lot of them drive, drive a lot of me and be going looking at it like, you know how they are, the rubber nickel. And I said, no, no, no. I go on down the road, leave the mask on. Uh, I'd go sometimes two, 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 three miles down the road. You have to trust somebody to make that mask, right? Who did you trust to, to make it? My wife. My wife made all the maps for me. And uh, she made quite a few, I guess. Did a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, gowns and whatnot for a couple of What was his name in that Rick Flair? Rick Flair. Next week on All Star Wrestling, we will get a look at Harley Race as he defends his world title against Ted DiBiase. Look at that wrestling too and that million dollar knee lift and the crowd going berserk. That's what they came to see. And he's got the former world heavyweight champion literally begging for mercy in the corner. Unbelievable. And also the Greg Valentine. Greg Valentine. Dusty Rose. Dusty Rose. Uh, uh, Tight-knit community. Uh, what, was the, what was the woman? She knew. Oh, Dolly Parton. Wow. Oh yeah. That, that's, that is amazing. Yeah, she, she was uh, she was really a, a terrific, terrific person. And she draw and draw and everything herself and make the pattern herself. She was very talented. You have hate, to be talented. I hate to lose her, but she... A phenomenal feat, sir. Well, Gordon, I've known for years, and I'm sure you have, as long as you've been around wrestling, there's a counter for everything. And there's a counter for that hole. Matter of
matter of fact, I've got a couple of them that I worked out. I realize Superstar is more perfected on that hold than this other fellow is. But nevertheless, there's a counter for everything. Yeah. A trademark of yours in ring uh, is your ability to counter wrestle. And I, I'm a bit of an amateur wrestler myself. Oh, God bless you. Yeah, you're telling me. I feel it every day, but I appreciate, you know, for every move somebody did, you had a counter for it. Oh, yeah. And how did you get to that level of, of knowledge of that? Well, I, I, I worked out with some of the best in the world, including Lou Zed. Yeah. I was very, very impressed with him. He was Absolutely. I, I wrestled. Since I was 14, 15 Me too. years old. <laughs> Me too. And you also had that million dollar knee lift. Oh. <laughs> Who showed you that? Well, I, I never got to use that on it because he never got, he, he never bent over. <laughs> I said, don't, whatever you do, don't bend over. Is this coming? Yeah, he just about it. I know all about it. So, Drew tells me that, Johnny. I had more fun getting to wrestle. We became very, very good friends, and uh, we, uh, in fact, I think we had a lot of time there. It was exciting, you know, I, I love him, he's a good man, very respectful, and he means a lot to you me, know, especially today. Absolutely. Kids today don't have any respect for nothing, let alone their child. Yeah. But that's wrong, bro. Hey, you need to do wrong, you need to eat your ass watch. You know, you, have, you, went, you wrestled a lot of big names. Like oh, yeah. A lot of big names. Ric Flair comes to mind. Uh, the fans, like you just said, but there's one that was here tonight that I want to talk about. Yeah, Superstar. Oh, Superstar. I hope everybody's paying attention. This belt here belongs to me. Nobody else. It's mine, you understand? Not any one of these guys, or anybody in this area, or anybody in professional wrestling is going to take this belt. Wrestling number two, Tommy Rich, Muscle Man Tony Atlas, Travis Sullivan. This is my belt, and I'll hold on to it as long as I want to. Tell me a little bit about your rivalry. He was a good wrestler also. He was an awful one. And the reason for it, I believe, is he wrestled amateur. A lot of professional wrestlers have not got into the amateur wrestling. So therefore, they don't know the, the balance of uh, coordination and uh, the, the, the true uh, thing about Talk about these legs being hard as that concrete. I gotta ask you about a story then. What's that? 
I heard a story that you took a burlap sack of rice. Yes, I did. Can you tell me that? <laughs> yeah, and I busted it too. And I gave it, I gave it to BD. Boom! And it went everywhere. And uh, they, they looked at me like, oh shit. <laughs> I said, well, you ask for trouble, it's going to come. And that's why. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And uh, thank the good Lord that I had the, the opportunity to, to prove to them the fact of the power that he can, can have. Yeah. Well, you, you talk about an opportunity. Do you ever have the opportunity to spread wisdom to the younger generation of wrestlers that come through? I, re I, I, I coached wrestling for, oh, about almost two years in um, Texas. And there was there, the boys down there, and I don't mind telling you, I was kind of a, a hard nose when it came to wrestling. Uh, first of all, I couldn't stand for it, and I, I kind of got some kids too. And, uh, and my, my coach came over to me and said, oh, aren't you a little hard being over with them? I said, no, no, I'm not hard, but they have to learn that it, this, this is serious. They would, they would get in there and go through the motions and whatnot. They'd fall down and laugh. People you know, what's the funny about that? Yeah. There's nothing funny about it, you know. And uh, he kind of looked at me a little funny. And I said, but I am. Either you like to wrestle, or you don't. You, you like the athletic sport of it. I said, or you don't get out playing the game. Sport that is really very, very interesting, very knowledgeable for your whole body to learn condition, to be in, be in good shape. Now my, my coach used to make me do a thousand or a hundred, hundred Hindu squats at one time, no stop. Damn, my leg used to be like that kind of harder off. Either you do it or you get forget about it. Yeah, yeah you're not. They all. Yes, sir. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time. Oh. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. One of the best of all time. <laughs>